I am Rich Eisen. I should start every hour that way. Wouldn't that be weird? That would be really weird. Well, just in case people weren't sure. You know what I mean? Well, I, 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 I don't know. What? You, you really like to set the table. You could just start talking. What do you mean? People who are listening to us have already found us. I they understand that. To, they don't need to hear the eight other ways to, to get our show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow. It's, it's, oh, wow. Jeez. <laughs> no, no. I'm just saying. I'm, it's it's called, not a criticism. It's, 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 it's not a criticism. Hold on a second. Marshall Fox here on the Rich Eisen Show. And you know, um, <laughs> you've been here. Maybe he might be the uh, most uh, frequent guest we've ever had on this program. He's on the second episode. Correct. Yep. Um, hmm. And so, and you know Brockman. Did that sound like a critique to you? Of the way I, I start the hour? Are you Rich Eisen? That's correct. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a podcast? What? I, it's called broadcasting. Like, you don't know if anybody's tuning in for the first time. I'm no, not going to assume that Rich, people know what this so is all about. I so much from you, man. Thank Every you. time. Uh-oh. I, I learn so much from you. No, we, uh, no, not no, a setup? no, no, no. That's it. I'm done. Okay. I do, though. Like, I was like, maybe mm-hmm. I need to start announcing who I am when I walk into places. Okay. <laughs> 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 and where you can be found. Right. Yeah. Like table for Marshall Falk. I am Marshall Falk. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you're not on camera. You know what I'm saying? Like, welcome no, to I'm hour two. Uh, but, uh, uh, okay. It's even better. No? Now I'm going to start uh, second guessing myself. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you just did it. Well, we're here on the Roku <laughs> channel <laughs> and um, terrestrial radio and Sirius XM Odyssey and more. Marshall Falk's here. He looks great wearing those Jordans. Hey, you know who won uh, the national championship wearing Jumpman for the first time? First time, right? How about that? Yeah. Jumpman and any Jumpman. <laughs> <laughs> I like that line. Yes. That caught me. It's perfect. So what do you think of your quarterback perfect. here think, in L.A.? Hey, what do you man, think of Harbaugh here? Uh, what do you think? I just say about Jim, it's just impressive what he's been able to do. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just impressive. Fun guy to play with. Oh my God! Like the best in the huddle. Like what do you mean? Uh, it just, just uh, you know, he's a like he's a character, and very animated. In the same way you would see him in interviews, he'd be in the huddle calling the play. Like I write twenty, Bob. We're gonna run this. That's- <laughs> <laughs> so would you be laughing sometimes breaking the huddle yeah at his like, cadence yeah, like, and what he's saying uh, yeah yeah he had this like like he would he would literally throw the ball and go <sighs> i'm like jim why do you do that with, like, a, with a sound effect with the sound effect <laughs> with the sound effect like that dude from police academy literally <laughs> made michael, the michael, michael winslow of quarterbacks <laughs> yeah really yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Really? Yeah, like one of the, and I'm gonna say this, like, <laughs> in, in the dude just tough, man. He loved to compete, wanted to run with, the, wanted to run with the skill guys. Um, and I, I remember before I even met him, like watching <laughs> when he was with the Bears, he wanted to run down on kickoff. Like, <laughs> what quarterback wants to run down on kickoff? He's just different. He's different, and and his attitude, it, it was, it was amazing to watch. Um, what he created you know you don't know if the culture is the culture until you remove the coach and watch the team play and it, it almost seemed like the culture like the kids dug in the games that he was suspended they like dug in more mm-hmm. and he did he did what he said he was going to do literally that's, that's why i literally. have no issues yeah no yeah. 0.0 issues but he he's said done that everywhere he's been rich Everywhere he's been, when he left, it was a better place than it was before he got there. Every place that he's been. That's why we were talking the other day. He's got a very Parcells-type track record, okay, where he doesn't have the Super Bowls that Parcells had. I'm talking about he shows up, he has, you you know exactly what you're getting when you get him, and he changes a culture. He did it with New England, that's for sure. He did it with the Jets, that is for sure. Yeah. And he did it with the Giants, that is for sure. Mm-hmm. The Cowboys had their own culture. I kind of I, I kind of feel like he was in a different part of his career when he showed up with Dallas. But he he I mean he changed they changed along with Kraft the, the uniforms. They changed the logo. They changed everything. And um, but he also didn't stick around very long either. And that's that's what happened with Michigan too, except this time he he hung that banner, man. Yeah. He hung it. 
Yeah, I'm just I'm 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 impressed. Here here's what I like, Rich. Yeah, sometimes you don't get the championships, but just watch the quality of players and and how the players play for the coach. Mm-hmm. And I mean, when he was at San Francisco, you remember how hard like like watching them play, how 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 tough nosed the defense was. There's always two things that happens. Their offense and defensive line control the line of scrimmage. Everywhere he goes. That's like that that's the first thing. And you just don't think about quarterbacks creating that kind of identity. Uh you know, quarterbacks normally they want to have the the fun gun offenses and stuff like that. And Jim, everywhere that he's been, anytime there's been any type of like things wrong with the team, they bring in more offensive linemen or more tight ends and they run the ball instead of spread it out and throw the ball. He just understands his dad did a great job at teaching him and his brother that this game is won at the LOS. That's the line of scrimmage for you guys. Out In there. the trenches. So what do you think the Chargers are going to look like now? I know you've just described what he's done in the past, but now he's got this roster, this quarterback, and he's got um, he's got all, one would think, what he wanted from the Spanos family to set it up the way he wants it. So um, understanding that the culture with the Chargers the last couple of years was a very lax culture, um, that's about to be gone. And the guys on that team who aren't willing to sacrifice and work hard, they will be gone. <laughs> just just watch. Like, I'm telling you, like, there's they, they got some stars on that team um, that they're not, they don't play every game. <laughs> they're not playing a lot of the downs. Uh, all of that's going to change. And 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 the guys who really want to win, and they want to win with working hard and going out there and laying it all on the line, they're they're going to end up they're gonna it's just what he's done. He creates a winning culture and they go out and they compete. They'll have the, in a couple of years you'll see them making the push to get into the AFC championship. Here's the bad part. You know, and, and I always give the Mannings props for this. You know, Eli and Peyton made sure that they would never play each other unless it was in the Super Bowl. Yeah. They right. would never stop each other from getting in the Super Bowl. And now this family, they have a, you know, interconference rival with each other. And it surprised me that he, you know, I, I that was the only thing I was like, he won't take the Charger job because he and his brother could stop each other from being in the Super Bowl ex- instead of having their family celebrate competing against each other for the Super Bowl. That's why when Atlanta got in the mix, yep. I was like, uh, same here. as same a Michigan here. fan, I'm like, uh oh, okay. Yep. But we'll talk about Atlanta in a second, but just staying on the subject matter here is maybe Herbert was just the difference maker. Also Southern California, you know, those were just the difference makers for him to say, this is the one I'll take. So so the interesting thing about this is um, if I had not saw Jim kind of make the decision to go with J.J. at Michigan and how they brought J.J. along, I'd be worried because I hadn't seen him with, like, this caliber of quarterback coaching it. Every team that he's kind of brought along, they had quarterbacks that was game managers in a, in a sense, not in a negative sense, but they managed the game. They didn't win the game because of their arm talent. And Herbert has arm talent that could win games for you. But he had luck, though, too, in Stanford, didn't he? I mean, so... But luck wasn't... He wasn't like as developed. That, that's at another this point story. Too. Okay, that's another story. All right. So, um, but I understand what you're saying, Alex Smith, and that, that and the, he kind of surprised people that he stuck with Smith when he took the job. Everybody yep. thought, oh well, that that's the end of Alex Smith here. Nice one, number one no. overall pick, and then he played in a game of his life against New Orleans yep. in a in a playoff game against Breeze. He was amazing, and then he went with Kaepernick when it was time to, you know. To stick with Kaepernick, the league went 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 a direction, and actually Harbaugh went that direction before the league went that direction. That kind of quarterback, like using him the way that they used him, yes. Before the guys, before the rest of these guys came out of uh, college, and the whole spread system went wild. Um, Kaepernick was the guy doing it. It was like, oh my God, he's going to get hurt. Nah, he's big. He's fast enough. So what what will they what will I guess um, just to put a button on it here? What do you think Herbert will look like? Because the general sense, Chris believes uh, an MVP is in the future for Herbert just for this move alone. Talent wise, I see that, but I, I think now um, because uh, because of Jim's culture, uh, they're going to build this uh, this offensive line will look different. 
they're gonna they're gonna smell different. Hmm. They're gonna play different. That's just that's where he that's that's where he he does the building first. Just pay attention. Watch the offensive line. Like there, he's gonna find some guys that that want to put their hand in the dirt. That 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 take pride in standing in front of a guy, <laughs> taking a guy on. Mm -hmm. That's his that's his mo. And then that'll help Herbert in its own right. Any quarterback, when you have time, when you have time, you're gonna look very good. And then what do you think is uh, he, he's gonna be with the fans here? I mean, you you know what that's, it's like going to the, that, you, you know what it's like going in that building sometimes. That's, that's it, going to be interesting to watch. You know, Jim and um, I don't want to call it antics. It's just he answers the questions he want to answer the way he wants to answer them, mm -hmm. and that's that's it. And he rolls with it. He, he, he what I what I love about him is he doesn't care what you think about him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he really doesn't care. He don't care if you like his khakis or not. He don't care if you if you like that he wears gloves and he throws the ball with his. He don't care if you like that he was trying to look exactly like Bo. He doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Marshall Falk here on the Rich Eisen Show. What do you think of Raheem Morris's hire? Great by hire. Atlanta? Great hire. And and I'm, I'm going to tell you, his first stint, um, obviously Tampa was a mess. Um, and it didn't go quite the way he wanted it to. But Although I he did have a seven-win difference from I, year one to year two. It, yes. But I'm just saying it didn't go the way that, that he wanted or they wanted. Okay. And I think that um, I think that he's learned a lot. Um Spent some time over uh, over with the Rams and just just listening to him um, last year before the season, he was like, "I got a lot of guys. We don't know who these guys are, but I got a lot of guys." And when the Rams took the field that on defense, like you didn't know it was Aaron Donald and like who are the rest of these guys, right? And Raheem did a great job, did a great job coaching some guys up, um, you know, going from a lot of names to a lot of non-name brand names here in LA and um you know there's there's some guys that that really that really stepped up and and they made a push and got into the playoffs man well you know some uh, great coaches um did not have their first stint go well at all correct Mike Shanahan had time with the Raiders mm -hmm. before he was a Bronco um Pete Carroll with the Jets and the Patriots before obviously USC and Seattle and then the the ultimate with Belichick and Cleveland, although you know they did, they did go to the playoffs and um, win a playoff game, mm -hmm. right? And then he and the Browns dissolve. Yeah, we I'm, all I'm know excited it. for Raheem. He's 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 done he's done a lot of good things in this league, and um, and I, I'm I'm gonna just say it because it needs to be said. Mm -hmm. A lot of black coaches don't get a second chance. A lot of black head coaches don't get a second chance. A lot of them don't. Um, we've had we've had a, a, a couple, but to see Atlanta like, okay, and and couldn't be a better spot for him. Could not be a better spot for him, especially since they did let him out of the building. Yes, last time. Yep, they could have removed the interim yes. tag. They could have did not. Yeah, and now here they are again, and they it's like, oh yeah, we 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 messed up. Yeah. And, and okay. they chose him over Belichick. Is really, uh, and, that, and, and, and a, twelve other candidates. That, but that that sounds. I don't know if that sounds as good as it sounds. What do you mean Does by that? Does that make sense? Like, that's a hard choice. <laughs> oh, yeah. hard, I, I'm just wondering what, what was Bill asking for? What was Bill asking for that they wouldn't give him? Because let's be honest, that's a like that's a no-brainer. If you're going two defensive coaches, Bill's the obvious pick. And the question is, what did Bill ask for that made them say, nah, Raheem's the guy? I don't know. Um, it could be as simple as time, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, Raheem is, oh, you know, I'm, I don't, I won't say half his age. No, I but, agree. But I mean, that it could be as simple as that. I, I, I don't know. But, but you're, you're an organization looking and searching for an identity, mm -hmm. and you need to win. Oh, I mean, th th that, that is the no-brainer. I, I don't know. Right. It, it could be, it, you know, that Morris just. Knock their socks off. I, I hear. I'm not taking anything I, away no, I know from. That. But that's a like, and, and I'm saying this. That, that would be a hard decision for me. I'm trying to get somewhere. This guy has been six times, and I'm trying to get there. It it's it would be hard. Like, I, and I'm saying, what did Bill ask for, or maybe what was said in the interview that 
for them. And 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 maybe Raheem, maybe I'm maybe I'm shortchanging Raheem's ability to sit down and 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 like interview and maybe he blew their socks off. That could be the case. But I'm thinking like, what what did Bill like? What did what did he ask for to where Arthur Blank and company was like, nah. I don't know. That is going to be the the ultimate question because the speculation is surrounds the power structure there and Rich McKay, the CEO, being there and maybe Rich and Bill grinded gears for all those years over the competition committee. But I, I, I that that this is one million percent total speculation. But Adam Schefter tweeted out that the power structure that the coach and the general manager report to McKay who reports to to blank has been changed as well that Morris and Fontenot are going to be reporting to blank directly. So I, I don't know if that was the power structure that Belichick had a problem with that got removed. It seems I, I don't know the answer to yeah, it. That's why I keep saying it. Like if you to, to say no, if, if Bill wasn't your choice, like what was it? Because if I'm Atlanta, I'm like, I'm like, what do you need? Bill, That's what, what I th- honestly I thought when we were talking about it here when Belichick yeah. we had a sec the first interview you, TJ tell tell Marshall how you thought Belichick's first interview with the Atlanta Falcons went go oh, ahead well, and tell him well Marshall you know Bill comes in he sits down hello hello how are you he pulls out a Halliburton briefcase and he opens it and much like Marcellus Wallace's briefcase and Paul Fiction a light emits from it and he reaches in and he pulls out eight little silver and gold. Uh, trinkets, uh, Super Bowl rings, you know what they look like. Mm-hmm. And he just puts them on the uh, yeah. the desk in front of him, kind of kicks back. And it's like, that oh. was the first interview. And then the second interview, <laughs> the follow up interview, was just bringing the same thing back to yeah. it. Like, that's his interview. The second interview, he said, You know, that little feeling behind your neck that you feel? <laughs> that's pride. That's pride. Messing with your mind. Messing with your mind. That's pride. It's a great These thing, Reigns. By Marshall Falk. <laughs> Well, he got his Atlanta privileges revoked. Uh, I mean, I, I I don't know, and and it does beg the question. Like, I, I hope I hope that I'm shortchanging Raheem's ability to sit down and and blow their socks off, and and, and because he had been in the building before, he understand the culture of 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 coaching and being in Atlanta, um, and embracing whatever that was that he said. Here's where I can get you guys. I've been here before. Speaking to that, I, I hope that's the case, Rich. Well, I'm, I'm honest with you. Uh, Kurt and I saw Belichick on December 23rd, the night before the Christmas Eve game that the two of us called on NFL Network in Denver. He was as into coaching and talking about coaching and the X's and O's as I've ever seen, and as one million percent Belichick in talking about the game with passion and talking about. So it's not as if he didn't want to do it anymore. That's for sure. And he just, uh, his institutional knowledge is is second to none. Like, I've never, I've never witnessed anything like it before, Marshall. I just, I, I, just, I, I can't not get out of my head. Belichick sitting down with, with Arthur Blank and, and McKay, and they're asking him questions like he's, like he's at a presser. You know the kind of answers that he gives at the pressers? Yeah. <laughs> He just like we're moving on. We're moving on to the contract. You right. know, like he can't say <laughs> we're moving on to the dotted line. You and know, they're trying to dig we're moving deep. on to the pen. Like, what are we talking about here? I just, you know, I'm just picturing mm-hmm. him answering the way that he answers impressive. I don't know. I, 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 well, you know him. You've been you around him. him on, like, but, but he, you've been he around never him. Allow people to press him for answers. He just. Uh, oh, uh, you would. I would have loved for you to have been here, and then we'll take a break. I would have loved for you to have been there because the last question like we'd already been speaking like 45 50 minutes and i said this one's for me i even said that to bill as the wind up i'm like this one's for me what was your scouting report of kurt before the super bowl that you played him in okay and i I swear to you the first things he was talking about was how to stop you and how to stop you and how and kurt was talking about how you were held by willie mcginnis and he was going back. It wasn't a hold. And and where he remembered everything down to like the down and the distance and the time on the clock. He remembered how Kurt ran one in because the guards popped up and each went separate ways, making it think like they were going to run it to you on certain sides. And Kurt just walked straight into the end zone. He was like angry about it still. 
about how they fell for that like banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> and I just sat there to myself. I'm like, this guy's unbelievable. Like I'm an encyclopedic mind. But he talked a lot about you to the point where I'm like, well, what about 13 over here? You know? And he just was talking about how Kurt, you know, had, was able to dissect things. And he remembered everything down to the last second of that Super Bowl. What do you think when you hear that? No, it's, it's, that, that's what he does. That's, that oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, every, every defense that he's coached, when he went against a team that was good, it was like, all right, who and what makes this go? Let's take that option away first and yeah. see how they respond. You were held, though, right? Oh, a bunch of times. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. A bunch back, of times. Legal back then. <laughs> then Bill Polian changed the rules. Well, that was pre that was pre um illegal contact. There wasn't no such thing as yeah, well Ty Law helped him change those rules, right? Oh yeah, because Peyton Manning couldn't play in the cold. All right. Let's get right into it with the NFC championship game first. Brock Purdy's performance against the Niners, uh against the Packers concerning to you or not? Got to think about it. No, mm. no, no. I just, I just, I want to say this the right way because he's a, he's a young kid. And, That's and correct. It, and, and literally, it happens. Um, he lost, he lost it, and and to and Kyle Shanahan helped him out. How so? Um, they put him on the center, let him drop back, gave him a couple of throws. The ball, balls were sailing across the middle. He was missing throws. The timing were off. Um, was, that, it, was, that a, was that a rain thing, a Debo thing, or or, or just like he's nah, – it's, I, it's I a just, moment thing. What it, is it? He, he it, it, There was a moment in the third, in the beginning of the fourth, to where he lost his confidence. His, his ability they, – they say you start seeing ghosts. Like literally, quarterbacks – there's – there's um, all quarterbacks throw the ball with, with anticipation mm -hmm. of where you're going to be. But if you need to see it to throw it, then that's a problem. That becomes an issue. And there was just some there was some horrific throws that he made. Like the the, the throw that looked the best that went over to safety and just perfectly dropped in, like that was a pick six. Ball kind of sailed on him, just got up above the 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 underneath guy. Um but but Kyle Kyle, they threw I think they threw an under route and then a seven route. Two throws that if you throw it too high, the only thing you can't do is throw it late. If you throw it too high or throw it too far, ball goes out of bounds. Was this they the final drive you're down. talking about? This was, yes, in the final drive. Was that the, the one to Ayuk and then the one to Conley that yes, you're referring to? Yes. That was after two, Kittle dropped one too, which is two rare. Those throws right. were like, boom, that, that got him back to to where he needed to be. It was it was It was the first time that I saw – even in his face, concern. Like, the kid looks unflappable. It's just like, look at me. He's like, I've been doing this. And um, he lost it. He literally lost it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, I don't cheer for the Niners by no means. Um, I started to cheer for the kid because I wanted him. I, I didn't want it to go like that for him. Wow, Rams cheering for like, the I, Niners. I, just, I, wanted, I, I didn't want it to, <laughs> right. to go like that. I, like, that. Right. There, there was no way that... Like, if he had thrown a pick and then the game was over, the next season, like, it would be in question of how he would come out of it. Well, like that's how tenuous it is. It's, it feels. Um, Niner fans will tell you he's the guy. He's our guy. You know, obviously Shanahan chose him as the guy. Um, and uh, even though, you know, I guess he admitted that they told him if we get Brady, you know, we're going to start him this year, and obviously they didn't get Brady, which is a story that really hasn't, you know, been discussed much this week. But all that said, um, he did get it back. He said he lost it. He did find it just in time. Nice drive, great drive, drive that we were hoping to see from Purdy. Yeah, uh, all you know, quite a bit. So, does it concern you going against Detroit? Yes, because if, if what if it's a nice night and Debo's playing? If there's moments in this game, because here's here's what has it happened. On this team, mm -hmm. and 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 it and it literally happened against Green Bay, and and uh, Green Bay did it did the same thing to Dallas, and and it got to Dak. These teams that rely on their defense, and 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 then a team goes out and execute against your defense, and then say hold serve, 
<laughs> and you you get the ball and you have to you have to score or maintain a long drive. They're not used to that. They're used to their defense three and out getting the ball back. Three and out getting the ball back. If their defense is not getting takeaways, if, if the defense isn't what it's been, and they have to play a shootout type of game to where, hey, we have to rely on you. I don't know if I don't know if Brock is built for that. And when you said that Shanahan, you know, bailed him out or helped him out, um, I don't mean to say bailed, you know, part of me, straight up, was like, huh, because the best way to kind of help him out is keep giving it to twenty three. And Somewhat. after 23 scored, he only got it once in the next two drives. Somewhat. What do and you mean? Because uh, you got because right. you got to get your because, quarterback because, out so, of it. So so there's here here's the thing, and this is this is always the the caveat for the play caller. Do you wait to ask the guy to make the throw when everybody knows he needs to make the throw, or you have him make the throw on first or second down when they know they know you need to run? Everything's saying run. I got to throw a pass now. I got to see where he is. I can't wait for third down. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I can't do that to him. Mm -hmm. That's too much pressure. So what they did was on the first or I think it was second down. Like the two throws happened on second down. And it was it was situations where there were obvious run McCaffrey downs. And they were like, no, nope, we got to throw it. The best downs to throw on. It's like it's a whole mind game thing on what you do, Rich. And, and they and, and, and Shanahan rolled the dice. And it worked. Like, it literally worked. They put the kid under center. He took the ball, dropped back in rhythm, poof, delivered the ball down the field. So, but you are concerned against Detroit. I but, am. But like I said, what a, it's supposed to be a nice night, not raining. And Debo may be playing. So I'm fine with all that, Rich. I'm just, here. here's the thing. Detroit is going to move the ball against the 49ers. You defense. believe that? that, that uh, like, they, they just. How? They, give, they, me, give, me, give, me the, give me the how on that. Because because they have the elements that you need. All right, St. Brown is a is is a guy that can catch short passes and run through tough tackles. They got a back that can break it long and catch the ball and cause some issues on the on that level. That's they Gibbs a, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, Gibbs. Okay. They got they got a tight end that can threaten the middle and and he's a great outlet. And then they got they they got they got a receiver and uh, and Jamison Williams that can that can get deep. Like they have the elements. Not to mention the biggest element. If you watch if you watched in that Green Bay game. Mm -hmm. The Green Bay offensive line manhandled the 49ers defensive line. I hadn't seen anybody stand up to them and like just with these five guys, we're gonna do some chipping on the outside, but and they could not get there. I, I think Detroit line is better than Green Bay's offensive line. So are, do you like the lines in this game? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, then give me that side of it I, then. On the flip side, I'm worried about Jarrett. I'm worried about Jared. I just like these. These are the big game moments. Like, and and for him, I'm like, th th he's been taking huge steps, man. Huge steps. You know, when he was with the Rams, he felt like a part of the team. This Detroit line, I feel like he's leading this team. Okay. Like it's a, it's a different animal. It's a different animal, and I'm I'm happy for him. I'm happy for for what he's doing, um, because it's it's listen. You 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 trade him. You bring in Stafford. You win a Super Bowl. It's a it's a direct indictment. On this young man. So, but you believe that they can move the ball on the 49ers yeah. defense, and you have established that you are concerned about Brock Purdy's ability to, um, if he loses it again, to get it back, maybe or whatever. Or just to, you're just concerned about, you know, in his second year, his first NFC Championship game that we expect him to play in full. Um, so then, how do the Niners win it? Where, why do you why That's do you feel at the about, end of the day? I'm, I'm worried about Jared. Like in like, in the in a third fourth quarter moment. Just 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 if the moment if the moment is too big for him. Like if the moment is too big for him, I I'm, I'm I just I call it what it is. In the Super Bowl against the Patriots, the moment like that moment was too big for Jared. Well, maybe that moment will cause him to have I, this I, moment I, to be I, less and big. I wanted, that's that's it. That that's exactly that. Perfectly said, Rich. That is that is it. And I, and I hope so. And if, if Jared can handle the moment, because against the Rams in the playoffs, the moment came and he rose up to it. He did, no and, doubt. And, and he did it. And he did it this past weekend too. Now, it was it, 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 it was some possible picks that that that, that could have happened. But when the moment when the moment was there, he he rose up to it. And you love seeing that. I, I love seeing seeing guys get through things and uh, and conquer, you know, their demons and um, and. And deal with the pressures of the game because that's all. That's all we're dealing. We're all dealing with the pressures of the game. 
You know, it, it, it's, it's just a game until, hold on, wait, I got to make this throw. Mm. You know, like <laughs> right now, one guy right now, right now, Jordan loves, he, he keep waking up that he threw that ball. Right now. Like he keep waking up. He keep waking up that he threw that ball. That moment, the moment was too big for him. And he was cool, calm throughout the whole game. Before we take a break to talk about the AFC Championship game, I do want to give you, because of who you are and what you've done and what you stand for in terms of this position as well, to give you some time on McCaffrey, who's, oh, who's an MVP and Offensive Player of the Year candidate at the running back's position in 2023, man. Yeah. So what, you do, know, you think, what do you think of his game? I I, um, I love everything that he stands for for this team. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, Rich, I just – I have so much respect for him and how he plays the game and and the word that we use sometimes and we don't really get into it, the kind of teammate that he is. Because if I was on the MVP run and they were handing the ball to Debo, I'd be pissed off. <laughs> Do you understand that? Handoffs are limited in the game of football. <laughs> They're talking about, you going to hand the ball to 19? You know you, you know, I got 20, 20 some thousand, 2,000 plus yards. What? Like, I, it just, I, but... Never. You don't you don't get you don't get a thing from him. You don't get in that drive the fact that he he was he was like chomping up the yards and they, they decide to throw. You don't hear much from him. In today's league, there's just not many guys that 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 has that element of uh and understand the element of of, of team. What and and at the running back position, the the the, the position that's the most devalued in the league. Well, how difficult is it? Because he makes it look so simple. You did too to go into a game knowing to what the the run scheme is and the passing game is and the blocking scheme is. I mean, he's doing it all. Yeah. I mean, what sort of toll does that take? It's it's a lot. Like there's a, there's a lot that goes into that. I mean, uh, you 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 watch you look at the same league that I look at and teams have two and three backs. And there's guys who come in and they carry the ball once and catch the ball once and they tap their helmet and they run out, and there's there's there in, there's interchangeable parts, and he's like, no, nah, just leave me in. That's like I I, I and as Mike Marsh used to say, you know, from 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 when you run the next the last play to when you get back to the huddle, between when you break the huddle, hopefully you caught your breath and you can go again. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, I, I just got to tell this story real quick, then we'll take the break at the combine, and after the combine, and prior to the draft. The conversation about Christian McCaffrey is he's a piece of fine china from Stanford that hardly anybody saw outside of his highlights and that, you know, if you if you run him between the tackles, you're going to lose him. And one guy told me that is not the kid, and it's this guy right here. You told me, you're like, this, Tough. this, this guy's going to be between the tackles and he is going to be a bell cow. Yeah. And he can also catch it too. You saw it right from jump. Yeah. I remember it, that. It, 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 it's that. easy to see. Um, sometimes at the combine, people let's let's be honest. At the combine, they're looking for reasons to not draft you, right, or to not pay you. They're not looking for reasons to. And the kid had he had everything. Then you you just had to put him around some talent. All right, back here on the Rich Eisen Show, Marshall Falk here for uh, another segment. We'll get to the AFC Championship game in a minute when our radio audience returns. I'm saying that to my television audience. <laughs> You're so big time. You got radio audience, television audience. On demand. On de Live. Yeah. God. YouTube. My God. Yeah. yeah. Chris is on that too. Yeah. You got a podcast? Oh. <laughs> I just love that. Are you? Do you? No. What do you got? What do you got planned? You no. got something in the plans? Uh, there's something cooking. You know? All right. Mom, Anything so. you want to promote that you're doing? That's not you yet. want to talk about? Not yeah, but this. we will. You still we'll own the, do you still own the all yep. own all those? I still sling chicken. Popeye? Sling chicken. Is that yep. what, is, is Popeyes, it, yep. How many, how many franchises do you have? Uh, we got about what? What would you want to talk about less, that or your golf handicap? Which which number do you want to talk about less? Um, the golf handicap. Yeah, my golf handicap is a little high right now. Well, but oh. it, it's but it's still lower well, we than the deep, number we, of we Popeyes chicken franchises you have. Than, way lower, yes. No moment. Single we, digit. We, no, I, I don't know. We've we've had we had a lot of fun crazy ass live moments together on NFL network. <laughs> I mean, but the time when it was the KFC blimp. Oh, oh my God. And I'm reading this. I'm reading. The, oh it's called a blimp God. pop where you read the, you right. know, the, sure, sure, sure. the, the card for the blimp. And I read the blimp card and Warren Sapp goes, <laughs> that ain't real chicken. <laughs> <laughs> now, was he thinking you were doing you a solid by talking no, up Popeyes? No, or? So, 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 
<laughs> before before we came back, we were talking about chicken and, and like, is that what well, happened? What kind of chicken? And and so I was explaining to him how KFC got caught, how, how Kentucky Fried Chicken got caught cloning birds. Mm. And they had to change their name, and they could no longer be called Kentucky Fried Chicken oh. to KFC. And then we come back, and I do the KFC blimp, and he goes, that ain't real chicken. The make goods were oh. so large and oh. so long, Mooch almost dressed like Colonel Sanders <laughs> the following Sunday. <laughs> oh, my God. Back hilarious. on the Rich Eisen Show radio. <laughs> that ain't real chicken. The TV, we just told a great story yeah, on the good. Roku side yeah. of things. <laughs> your, uh, your opinion of the AFC Championship game and the key to it is... What you you have to beat Patrick Mahomes if you want to if you want the right in AFC to go to the Super Bowl you have to beat Patrick Mahomes. Well, you know the Ravens are up for that challenge. You know that, right? Uh, that they that they are ready for it, right? That, that's words. So. Those are words. I'm just saying those are words. Buffalo was up to the challenge. Buffalo was like, we got him at home finally, and that dude, that dude is a wizard, man. I'm just uh, like I, I am so impressed. If, if you think about all the turmoil, um, you throw in a little Taylor Swift and, and that team and what was going on with the drop balls and all of this stuff, and it's just amazing to watch what Patrick Mahomes has done. And I, I like when they were like, oh, my God, Patrick Mahomes is record in the playoffs, but he hadn't played a road playoff game yet. Now he has. Now he has. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Now he's he got has. a second one. It's, yeah. it's, just, it's, it's just crazy what he's been able to do. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Oh, his numbers, and I was talking about his legacy and, 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 and how he can build it, and it's our poll question right now, and I'll ask that to you before we go out the door, is which quarterback um, has the, uh, the biggest, uh, what are the greatest legacy wins in him to what a Super Bowl would do for their legacy? I've just totally botched it, but we'll get to that later on. But, I mean, Mahomes, what he's done so far is amazing. It's remarkable. It's unprecedented, even with Tom Brady in the mix of precedence. So the Ravens, are are they not equipped defensively with uh, at every level to, to bounce the Chiefs? They are. Okay. They are. But it's Patrick Mahomes. Like, I'm, I just like, – I think of him like that. Whatever you do, there's, there's certain things like that he – his his ability to throw balls in the areas and and you know get the ball up and down over guys and it's just like his arm talent is that special and uh, and it's it's impressive like you, you understand he got a different play caller this year than he had last year like he's won most of the time when when play callers and guys like the guys that they've had leave as coaches and come back and stuff like that normally there's there's a lack of continuity, regardless if it's the same offense. And he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't skip a beat. He doesn't. It's it's just well, amazing. It, the, I, I think Baltimore has what it takes. They they do. They do. But 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 they been, I think, home field advantage, crowd noise, and because their defense uh get got this many sacks or or had this many turnovers is what's gonna beat Patrick Mahomes. No, you gotta go beat him. So Lamar's a way to beat him too, right? He he is. He is. Do you think he's the MVP? Lamar? No. Who's the MVP? Kristen McCaffrey. Okay. Yeah. So Lamar Jackson has at least improved in, in this year, oh correct? Oh, my God. Rich. Right. I'm talking night and day. His, his, his abilities to, to remain a passer and, and play, play on script, throwing the ball and doing that, that's changed your offense. Like that's that's the dynamic. That's the difference. That's the difference. Well, and a lot of people would say the fact that they they he's on script more and playing you know a quarterback after pocket breaks down still with with his arm talent more than just his legs. That's all another way of playing quarterback too. um, Is because they they are also entrusting him. They're entrusting him to to run this offense and that he has more of uh, ownership of what's going on on the field. So Potentially even changing plays and things of that nature. When I used to watch them, what teams would do is they would force him to run because they wanted to hopefully make him a runner only so they could defend that. What he's doing is, okay, you want me to run, but I'm only going to run and move but remain a passer. And and that That's that is the, the difference. part of his game mm-hmm. that it, it's it's what Patrick Mahomes does. 
you know, and, and I think Josh Allen is going to get there to where, okay, I can run, but if I run just enough to, like, have things open up, I'm more dangerous. And then when you do run, it's a big run. So you're saying Lamar, with his game, with his arm and his legs, is is surpassed Josh Allen and his ability to play quarterback? Yes. Okay. Yes, what, what he's been able to do, and, and, and then the collection of receivers that they have around them right now, this is probably the best collection of receivers, healthy guys, that, that they've had. So do you think the Ravens win on Sunday? I, I, I can't say that, Rich. Because I, you, you, you just... I it, just, I respect Patrick Mahomes that much. Hmm. Like, it just... Um, I mean, the, the Super Bowl that they lost to Tampa, Tampa had to beat him up. <laughs> the the guy was throwing passes, like, f- laid out. Like, you, you have to... You like have the Matrix, to, yeah. You have to beat him. It's it's just, it's it's impressive. Last, last year, what he and Joe Burrow did, like, you got to beat him. Because there's just no, he's he's not going to give up. You, you got to, you have to win the game. He's not going to give it to you. Hmm. Okay, so you believe it's Chiefs Niners in the Super Bowl? I didn't pick. I just asked you to. <laughs> I know. I'm on the fence with this one. Okay, you're on the fence with this I am. one. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I'm, I'm severely on the fence. Like, it... It's it's one of those you know when we used to be we have meetings I'm like I I, I couldn't pick until like Sunday I'm like okay here's what I got <laughs> yeah it's, I remember those days yeah he was I, your producer I, I, I literally <laughs> I, I can't I can't I'm, Marshall, I'm, I need I'm your back picks really no seriously I need your picks <laughs> that's how you lost some of your remaining hair I'm I like, like it I'm like I just it this is a tough one nice. man this is funny this is because Baltimore is the better team but Patrick Mahomes is is just an equalizer. And surpasser, from what you're saying, bro. He went. He went into Buffalo. People don't go into Buffalo and just get wins. Certainly not in a situation when you think that his offense is less than, and now they've flipped that switch, and it seems to be the case. So I guess our poll question: um, Let's ask Marshall Falk before we send him on on his Good Friday. Chris Brockman, go for uh, it. Yeah, Marshall, uh, whose legacy is most affected by winning the Super Bowl this year? Brock Purdy, Jared Goff, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes. Uh, Lamar Jackson. Uh, L- Lamar 55% Jackson. Fifty-five percent agree with you. Yeah. Why do you say that? Um, I, I, I <laughs> this is funny. This is it's, this, this is sad. I think more people probably thought, obviously, Jared Goff could win a Super Bowl before Lamar. Once Brock Purdy got going Mm -hmm. with the team that he was on, they felt like he'd have a better chance, and we know Patrick Mahomes. But a lot of people didn't believe that you could win a Super Bowl, that you can win a Super Bowl with Lamar Jackson. They just they just didn't believe that 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 amount of talent in the quarterback position, in the running sense, would never translate to a guy that could stand back there and do what he's doing, and he's he's done it. Munkin is Munkin is like. Uh, like that that is the games that he called the, the things that he do um at the right time that quarterback draw last week I was like oh perfect per- perfect call mm-hmm. like it was just the perfect call and he's been a perfect uh you know quarterback he really has been spectacular yeah. as, as a quarterback and TJ you mentioned before you you think it's Lamar as well because of how he was born into the league and what yeah. people were saying about Lamar Jackson like hey Run your forty-yard dash and work out with the receivers, mm-hmm. and be a running back. You know what? You know what? I just actually, uh, Dion posted his interview with Lamar, and he said, oh, from the draft. "I know you're upset. Was there anything that you could have done to got to get have your name called out of that locker room sooner?" He said, "It don't matter. It don't matter. I'm a Raven. None of that matters." He 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 had moved forward and he was ready to go out. And and do what he's always done, just prove the naysayers wrong. Nothing seems to phase him either, like ever. You know? The only thing that seemed to phase him was whatever was going on business wise during the spring that got ironed out. Now look at him. Yeah, and it didn't it didn't phase him then. He he just was like, look, he took his stand and that was it. He took all the heat, all the smoke, all the credit, all the critics, all the stuff that they had to say. Here's what he should take, here's what he shouldn't do. And and now now look. Yeah. They put some pieces around him. They made some moves. Um, 
I think one of the best moves that they made was to trade for Chicago to go get um, Roquan. Roquan. Oh, oh, my God. Boy, he and Patrick Queen. I'm like, there's very very few times I, I saw, like, two linebackers. I was like, oh, I don't want to play against them. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, <laughs> but them two, I look at them two dudes. I'm like, man, okay. I don't want to play against them two dudes. Marshall Falk, you are the best. You are the best. I love chopping it up with Thank you. Thank you, Rich. And, um, and, you know, let me know. when. It, are you going to Vegas? Do I see you in Vegas? I'll be in Vegas. Of course you are. Yeah, where are you guys set up at? Where, where, where the where, Super Bowl where? experience? You want to come by? Okay, yeah. just let me know. Yeah. yeah, just give me just give me a day's heads up. I'll let Del Tufo know. Okay, <laughs> Thanks, See, we, we keep it that's the guy. Rich, you always said that Marshall just books himself whenever he. I mean, wants seriously. To come on, so, yeah. Susie usually Susie booked him for the national championship game what viewing experience in our house. Love it. Here's, here's <laughs> how it usually. Hold on a second. Hold on. Wait, hold, on. <laughs> hold on. We're ten seconds away from losing our radio audience. I'm sorry to uh, you know explain the way things go here. There you go. Look at that. Two guys. Two guys. Fantastic. <laughs> Back hour three, like. Tom Pelissero coming up. Um, oh, you know, we also came up with, no, no, we got to another, we're still on Roku. Okay. okay. <laughs> See, Roku. I have to explain Hi, it. Roku. Even my guests. We also came up with a huge idea that night. It's a great idea. The, the almost Heisman house. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. Are we going to do this? You texted I, Peyton Manning. I, I, Are we going to do gotta, this? Got to keep it going a little bit. We... He was like, good idea, good idea. Because the almost Heisman house. Who did we say that we could get him a room? It was Desmond Howard. No, no, it was Desmond. I'm sorry. No, Desmond's he, in he it. We won. mentioned it to him. Yeah, we, it's oh, basically everybody it? who came in second. Desmond got no, one no, of my Heisman's too. Yeah. <laughs> he got the first one. And Gino Toretta got the second. Yep, Gino got Desmond well, got the first one. I don't see Gino in, in the Heisman house too often, though. Desmond got the first one in 91. I think they realized how. Uh, who did we speak to and say that you should be in the almost Heisman house also? Oh, you definitely did. Uh, and uh, we brought it, it, we mentioned yes. it to somebody, and they're you like, "Yeah, we, I'll hook you up with Marshall." Oh, who who was, was that recently? I gotta look at the list. Oh, were we talking to Charles about it? No, Charles is in the I mean, Heisman I know House, he's in it, but I wasn't sure. But if I thought, he brought uh, it up. Yeah, uh, did we mention it with Robert? But he's in it as well. Robert no, didn't mention it. No. Yeah. Let's do this. I don't know. Yeah, That'd be no, great. It's, it's, great it's, idea. It's a great. Yeah. It's a funny idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really, really good, good group of guys. Be a great group oh, of guys. Way, almost better than the actual Heisman House in terms of how the careers played out. True that. He won't say it. See, he's just going to nod his head. Yeah. With no, his, I'm just saying. Like, with Des his two point something Desmond handicap. Desmond got one of mine. Desmond, Desmond took my one in ninety one. Thurman, could, Thurman Thomas. You couldn't. You couldn't. House. You couldn't almost win as Heisman. a freshman. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, twelve to three Eastern, for free.